that told me to become friends with them. And yet you knew that be by becoming friends with them, they were going to hurt me. They were going to do some stuff against me. God said, I knew it. You're right. I knew it. I knew it. But I told you to trust me because even though now they hurt you, now your pain is going to give way to power. Now in your, revel your situation, you're about ready to get some revelation. You would never know me as a friend that sticks closer than a brother had they not hurt you like that. Had they not done some stuff to you. But now I'm getting ready to lead you. Somebody say, lead me, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands and open up your mouth a moment and just... you to trust me that I'll, I'll lead you down the paths of righteousness. Now remember what we talked about before. Still waters. What this means, green pasture. Green pasture doesn't just exist, you understand? Still waters don't just exist. What it means is the shepherd has gone before and the shepherd has dammed up the water and the shepherd has laid down fertilizer to create green grass so that by the time the sheep are now ready for this kind of grass the land has been prepared by the shepherd that's why he says thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy he's not really in, in the language of sheep and shepherd he's not talking about a physical table he's talking about a table land it means that it is a plateau or a flat area up in the mountains that the shepherd has gone before and prepared and cultivated so that it's got green grass and why it's in the presence of my enemies is because the enemies are all in the valley but now I'm up on the mountain looking down at my enemies while I eat my food I'm looking at them not being able to touch me Somebody say, lead me, Lord. Lead me. Lead me. So you're going to lead me in the valley of the shadow of death. Yes, you are. You're going to lead me into trials. You're going to lead me into difficult. Yeah, yeah, yes, you are. Any man's going to follow me, he's going to pick up his cross and come follow me. You're going to lead me into hurts. You're going to lead me into things that cause tears. You're going to lead me into difficulty. But the same God that led me in, tell somebody, is the same God that's going to lead me out. Same God that's going to lead me out. The God that led me into the trial is the same God that knows the exit because he is the door. He's the same God that's going to lead me out of this trial and lead me to where I need to go. That's why if I'll just follow him, he'll take care of me. Watch this. When you talk about the shepherd, and you talk about the shepherd of covenant, you have to talk the rod and the staff. Thy rod and thy staff, they do what? They comfort me. That's why when the shepherd wants to show affection to a sheep, he will pick up his staff and put it on the head or the shoulder of the sheep and walk. It's like holding hands. That's why, that's why when the shepherd wants to protect a sheep, and especially what happens is other sheep, when one gets sick, 
they will start attacking the sick sheep. They will butt it with their heads and push it down. Yeah, it's true that in the house of God, when you're wounded, it's almost like a pack of piranhas. Uh -huh. Coming right at you. But the shepherd's got covenant with you. Especially at nighttime, when the shepherd will be asleep, the sheep will get up and push those other sheep that are wounded. So what the shepherd does is he lays the sheep down that's wounded. Puts his rod on one side. Puts his staff on the other side. Puts a mantle of himself on the other side. And then lays on the other side. So all these things symbolize himself. And no sheep will dare to cross it. Understanding if you cross it, you deal with me. Because what you do with the least of my little ones, you have done it as unto me. Somebody say, Lee. You may be wounded in the house of God and not know how to protect yourself, but you have a shepherd. And if you will look at the shepherd and say, Lead me, protect me, oh God. Protect me against the false doctrine. Protect me against lies. Protect me against those things that will twist my concepts and my thoughts. Lead me. He will lay down his rod and his staff and his mantle and lay himself beside you and protect you in your night season when others would hurt hurt you and push against you and knock you down. The shepherd knows how to give you peace right in the midst of the storm. Honey, it's not time for you to take off, run, and bolt. It's time for you to run to the shepherd and say, lead me. Somebody lift your hand and say, Lord, lead me. I'm tired of trying to figure out stuff myself. I'm tired of trying to figure out whether I should go to university or go to a secular job. I'm tired of trying to figure out whether it's time for me to marry or not to marry. I'm tired of trying to figure out what university should I go to. All these things the shepherd has already figured out. Lead me. Come on, lift your hands one more time and love him in this house. Lead me. Lead me. <laughs> Lead me. Lead me. I'm not going to get to the third aspect of the shepherd. See if the Lord says to carry on tomorrow night or not. But the Lord wants you just to understand something. The problem is not that you're in a problem. The problem is will you be led? And who are you being led by? Are you being led by your flesh and your own desires and your own intellect and your own reasoning? Or are you being led by the shepherd? You have to decide to harness your flesh, which means control it, so that you can follow the shepherd. Sometimes the shepherd's going to lead you into the fire. He walks and disappears into the smoke of the fire. You may stop and even hesitate, and out comes a divine hand. Back to me. joined that praise team. 